day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. I think it, what they said in the letter was that they blatantly were showing, in accordance with the letter, it said they were blatantly showing, uh, they were blatantly, blatantly practicing their lifestyle. Outside so, of those black yeah. people. Now, I don't know if they did it in the privacy of their own homes or what they're doing to come to the congregation, locked up, kissing. I don't know. Yeah, but, what I'm but, saying, but the letter kind of indicated that they were doing something during the service that showed their lifestyle was kind of too. What was normally I'm about to go, Jess. Oh, all right. Hey, anybody want to do the communion? Yeah, I got you. All right, Bishop. Ready? Hey, but but the, the point I'm saying is, I don't. I think when he said, "See, the current service is not public, right? It's not. A, uh -huh. It's not. It's a. It's a worship service. I think uh -huh. it, it implied what the person was doing. Like, for example, when you had that woman staying with your house, right? right? That was that was known. Ah! That's that's <laughs> you fell off screen right there. You know? <laughs> Did I? Let me yeah, you can't tell the off screen. Did it? <laughs> well, he's gonna die if you don't get out of here. Let me see if got my spray. I have my spray in somewhere. But uh the the, the, the point is that these uh, how do sucker got in here? I might have to uh, get rid of them. But anyway, he came over here to me. Let me get, I got a, I had a spray for killing bugs flying. I don't know where is that. But uh, Ellis, the, the point is, uh -huh. I, the point I'm saying is that uh, we really want to, I think that was more of a personal life. Yeah, I got him. Uh, you're going to die now, boy. You're gone. I got him. <laughs> I got this thing called uh, uh Oh yeah. Your bugs on contact. Yeah. That sucker came in here, he he knew better. Was it wasp? Yeah, it looked like a wasp, yeah. They probably trying to find places to start building their nest. Building the nest, yeah. Yeah. No, I was already located a couple around my apartment. Yeah. Yeah, and he probably excuse me, let me get this off screen. He probably was uh crawling under the door. But it, uh -huh. I saw I saw one one time was just trying to get to the screen door. He couldn't get through. So he probably you know what? Huh? I think our, our personal experience is going to really have an impact on, uh, on how we perceive the city. city. And uh, I think that's where the Holy Spirit really comes in to kind of right. govern how our actions concerning another person. And, and it is going to be, it's not going to always be the same. Exactly. Uh, I, I, have a, I have several people in my life who are gay. I, I had more students that would get in my classroom than you could say you think it's 90% of my students' population is gay. And uh, I, on a personal note, felt like that was uh, a deception of the enemy. As I got to know them, I began to see that some of them were rebelling against something. Some of them were rebelling against their parents. Some were rebelled against uh, the, the things that they had suffered. Some of them were affected by the, the, life, the, the, the incidents of their early life. And they were not children that came out of the womb were like, I think I'm going to be gay. You know, a lot of them were. But then there were some that were so blatantly, and I mean, that blatant to the point where they were, they were, they were in their conversation abuse. They were challenged them. They challenged them. Nobody, gay was never a topic was for the classroom. Why are we bringing this into the scenario to debate it? It's yeah. not a part of lesson plan. But some felt the need, apparently, to really make that center topic and to develop a debate around it. Well, being in a classroom and understanding classroom management, I skirted the issue. I didn't come in and debate you over your lifestyle. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you know? Now, right. if you come into the church, if you come into the, the, the congregation and you want to wage that same battle, I don't know if I'm going to battle with you, but I know. I will definitely confront. I will. I will defend my position in there, exactly. and in the hope, in the hope that you will either conform to that decision or you will depart. Right. And it ain't my decision. Whether I like it or not, in the court of scripture, God don't. And like, like I, like I said before, man, I have friends that I didn't know were gay, 
they didn't stop being people that care for it because I found out they cared. Like, I can't talk to you anymore. Uh, it, it's not like that. that uh, the, I think that they find out so you're willing to cheat on their wives. He's like, man, I can't stand you. You low down even back. Right. No, I didn't stop liking them because they cheated. Uh, <laughs> It's like, man, you should have done that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you see what I'm saying is that the, the like the letter I showed you, I mean, I, I, the text I sent you was, if we do that across the board, we're going to find out that you probably put a whole bunch of people out of church. Yeah, man, the church. And the point is, I'm saying like, so I'm going to have to edit all this out. I'm going to edit it out. Cause you remember, we, I told you two brothers that we know are. Oh, yeah, that's in, the, in, our, in our midst. They have people in the congregation, I mean, they're not family doesn't Right, and see, well, one got a family like that, but I'm talking about the other one is adult, I mean, fornicators, right? We got we got some people who've been married, divorced, and now they they sleep with somebody else. Yeah, and all that wrong. I got people my family doing that too. You see what I'm saying is, though, but we don't call that rebellious. We don't write a letter for those things. I know you know that's in there. Ministry. We know that the teenagers are uh, having uh, a lot of them. Not, I ain't gonna say all. Oh, I say a good. I say well over fifty percent probably having sex. Oh yeah. You're young, and then we know that people who've been divorced that don't want to get married again, but they having sex with other people, and we're, we're not addressing those things. We're not. Those not being written letters for those things, like talking about that I'm aware of. Even if. If you thought you were sleeping with that woman, they yep. write a letter. They came, they came, I guess they came to your house. And they, I don't no, it didn't actually nothing come to the house that I know about, but I did get called before the church. And I was I was actually excommunicated from the church. See? And it wasn't because anybody ever proved I was sleeping with the girl, because I still didn't tell them what the situation was. They didn't uh they didn't believe it. And it came. And, 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 and okay, so after the end of the trial, and if it was a trial, you know, because I my pride rose up. Was I'm Elder Johnson. How you think I'm gonna be sleeping with a woman? You know what I'm saying? And like, right. I probably get in the house full of leaders. Like, How you think? And and, and and my whole history was that you know I've been with a woman that's been sick 23 years of our marriage. Right. So you know physical not having physical contact with somebody didn't really mean much to me. I didn't go to the Lord about that a long time ago. And 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 I was so arrogant in my thought process that I could not imagine them thinking that I would do something like that. And so I really got pissed off at them. Right. I got mad with them and I cussed, you know, I said, the heck with you. I, I, you know, I, I just do that in my heart across the board. I don't give a crap what you think. See? I'm well, not changing. And see, here's now, a, here's, what's the history for that though, I just want to throw back at you is that, how do we know a person is not sincerely trying to get to know God so that they can become whole with him? So that those things that is not acceptable to him is going to be addressed. They're trying to address with him. And while but, we're sitting there writing a letter saying is, you know, you publicly doing this, but you keep coming to church. And remember I said, we don't really have the whole story, right? Of course, see, I've been a part of that, right? We're about to drink it. Same thing. And, and, and to this day, them women coming to my house, and I'm sitting there on the couch with my wife, and I'm drunk. It was Mary Elder and Violet Smith, the, the pastor's husband, a big wife. And I'm sitting there drunk as a couple on the, on the couch with my wife, and I ain't going back to church because I can't stop drinking. And I'm embarrassed, man. Yeah. And these two women from the church are going to drag me back to the church. So this little round head preacher can keep, 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 keep me up with the word. Keep me up with the word. And, and I think, but, I mean, but it worked. The word it definitely worked. And it that's work. And that's what I'm saying is, people who I don't know why I'm, I'm hesitant to say put somebody out of ministry if they want to keep coming. But and if, I, and, and, and I'm here to go put people in your midst like that. And, and either that or here change your heart when it's necessary. You yeah. haven't encountered. I don't think you've encountered the person who's really confronted you concerning that. You know, the person who just really rebelled against God and saying, I don't care what God say or what you say. But, it, but, they, but they, could do that. they could do that. They could do that. Most people I know, Bishop, I mean, elder, they do that outside the church. The they ones that I know didn't. They, they are. Uh, got in the congregation. It, it was a particular, it was a, it's, I, I, that word peculiar stick in my mind now. 
it was a, a, a really neat circumstance where the person that was being confronted had ties to people who had a lot of influence in the church. But and that person wanted to be promoted in the church and the folk with the influence was a part of their family. The pastor would not promote that person. Right. And that began that that began became the beginning of a schism in the church because that person was was viewed by family members as being worthy of that the positions that they wanted to and what what was it there was there was what else deacon, they wanted to go deacon minister you know they talking? wanted to be elevated to ministry but what? they were still practicing that lifestyle would you and the pastor that? would yeah and the pastor would not elevate them right and so remember, they, they rebelled against them. Right. They rebelled against the whole church system. They they, right. they tried to displace this guy. They tried right. to get him kicked out of the church. But see, but back to let's pull back a little bit. Let's pull back a little bit. Cause we we talked about we already said we don't want to send them. We sit people down if they sinning, right? But if they just sitting there in the church just hearing the word, that's not that's not a threat to the church, right? But if they're doing what you're talking about, that's a whole different ball game. And that, right. that that's the scenario right. that I, I brought in mind. Like right. I said, I, I've been playing the, the fellowship with man when I was at McGuire Air Force Base, it was, it was a great, great fellowship. Yeah. I didn't know the number of guys in there that were gay that were gay. They right. were later. When it became fashionable, they all came out and said they were gay. Right. But um, I'm, I'm just saying about the people who seriously, I ain't I ain't talking about people trying to take over or looking for an endorsement. I'm looking for people. I'm talking about just like you as that alcoholic at that time coming in to hear the word. Yeah. And, and and they brought they brought you back to hear the word. Yeah, they did. And that's how so they knew it worked. They knew it worked. And, and I know but they could see from my personality that of my behavior that I wasn't trying to beat nobody down. And like, like I said, I was embarrassed. I wasn't even coming back. Because yeah. I thought it was wrong to be in the church drunk. See? And, but and, my point is, so so somebody's coming to know to learn Jesus. To get to know him, and if, if you're ministering to people and how to become one and with him, I, he'll take care of that because he's I the got, one. I, I have people in my life like that right now. Yeah. My students, I didn't kill my students off, and because I wasn't in a church environment, so I didn't really have to deal with. I didn't have to deal with that dynamic, whether they were gonna, you know, pollute the minds of the other saints or not. And when that was the issue, it was just a one on one. In between the two of us, I saw no need to break fellowship with them because I felt from the spirit that they kind of communicated me that they were searching for truth. That's my point. And they're searching for truth. I'm gonna keep. Uh, keep how you doing, doing, daughter? I don't care how much like a boy you just exactly. you're dressing. That's the only way you're gonna get away from the instructor is you get away from me. Yeah. I'm gonna call you what God made you. Exactly. With, with, and if you say call me something else, I might even call you something else. But then sometime I'm gonna call you daughter because it's gonna slip out. I'm gonna call so, you when I see you. I'm calling yeah. when I see you. But yeah. I haven't ran across the transgender. I'm just saying is that if they want to keep hearing the word, there's hope. And I don't wanna but put them out because of their like I said, if you're gonna put them out, you gotta put all the others out. I I, I my, my my tent toward the whole thing is love hope. Yeah, gotta love. Them. Whatever you do, do it for their benefit. Yeah. As, as much as possible. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if, if you got somebody that's disrupting the congregation, trying to convert everybody that's a homosexual, just by that's a whole different ballgame. It's a whole different, different ballgame. Yeah, that's, that's that's different that's ball game. And now we got to deal with that because you can't keep doing that in. Right. And don't forget, I, you, got, don't forget you got right. people trying to get people to do uh, adultery. You got people that try to get you into swinging, right? Swinging. That's right. You got to so, get them out too. That's, that's <laughs> they the got to go. Thing, right? So I ain't talking about I'm not I'm never talking about dressing that type of stuff because that you don't want uh, a that vision uh, where somebody has a vision of teaching people to sin. Yeah, I know you don't. That's that's what I had against the laws, and I know that they had nothing to do with sticking around for the most part. But to me, it was condoning it. It was condoning a behavior that God Himself has said is an abomination. So to make a law to condone something like that is to lead people into, or make them feel more comfortable in the environment than deadly, than lethal to him. And that's how I see sin. Sin is lethal to the sinner. Oh, sin. Sin, what a sin does, what sin, I ain't in it. 
it's not it's not my involvement. You know what I'm saying? Your sin is not gonna send me to hell. Right. Your sin is gonna send you to hell. Exactly. And, and from that perspective, it's how by a local person expressed if you're trying to help them not sin, not for my sake, but for their own. I mean, am I uncomfortable? I don't know. I don't been around so many homes. Like, no, I don't make me uncomfortable. I know what I am. But are uh, you are you uncomfortable with uh, an adulterer? I'm not. You know what? I done been most sinners. <laughs> I ain't uncomfortable with most sinners, man. I can't. I have burned anybody, and I know it practice on sexuality. And I'm not uncomfortable with that because I got friends that are murderers. <laughs> <laughs> I got friends that on exactly. So I, I, come, I come out of come a, a place that uh, I just feel I feel I feel comfortable among criminals. That's it. It's by the grace of God that I I didn't even judge. You know right. I, mean? I know and that's a fact and myself. That's the, and see, the other thing too was the fact that why are we even going to prison ministry, right? If, yeah, if, if we got you know that, what I'm and we got yeah. people that are forced to be, you know. Because uh, I see some of the, the, the most greatest saints and potential disciples of Christ in that environment. Exactly. These do wrong. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I know they're trying to get something to come out of there, but right. they are who they are, and they have demonstrated the fact that they ain't going to conform because you say so. Well, they, they, yeah. All these guys listen to God, they want to listen to you. Well, but I'd I, rather be, yeah. that's who I want to be around. I want to be with men and women who listen to the Lord. Forget what I'm saying. If I'm lined up with Christ, then that's cool. You follow, right. we'll follow. But if you if you follow because you're trying to follow me, I don't even feel comfortable with that because I know me. Exactly. In, in a minute, I'll be the fill out the box, and then you right. lost. Exactly. You that, get so your that's eyes off me, right. right? So that's what I'm saying is we we either going to minister, sow the word, water the word, or why God get an increase? Why why even do it? You know, yep, to, that, it, it's, it's for the making of Christ, disciples to the Lord, man. Exactly. That, and that's, the, that's what we fail at, making disciples. But if you Christ. Know, as a disciple, they'll be delivered from alcohol. They'll be delivered from, uh, what do you call it, homosexuality, or what you want to call it, some other thing. People will be delivered if you give them, if you stop running them off and feed them the word of God. That's all I'm trying to say. And I, I, I have the, the, the congregation that I've been a part of ran a few people off, and if they did run them off, it wasn't because they were homosexual, or even that they were sinning. It's because they didn't bring that to the table. Right. And when I say bring something to the table, I'm talking capital. I'm talking. I'm talking about money. I'm talking about material right. stuff. If you were talented, if you had skills, if you had degrees, if you had a good income, you was welcome at the church. You could come in with a dress on and a high heel. Uh -huh. <laughs> Maybe not, not that flavor, but the, 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 the level of holiness was measured on. You remember one scripture that says that consent game was godliness? Yeah. That's where they were. The congregation that I sat with for 13 years, they said, Why are you said that alone? Because I erroneously thought it was going to get better. Yeah. And God had already told me, you know, he said that. And I got to be behind that too. I got a lot of people that are doing stuff that I knew better. But, yeah. uh, it said that which is flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit is spirit. You're not gonna start in the flesh and end up in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna start out, you're gonna start out carnal, you're gonna end up carnal. You end up carnal, exactly. And that's, and that's what we went. And that's what I'm saying. I think the main thing is trying to come into Christ, be whole. But yeah. we're, we're gonna have how to much go. how much we talk that though, Beth? Yeah. We got how many times we, we had how many times did we talk that? We don't. We, we talk, don't. don't be a homosexual. Well, how are you going to stop in that unless you get Christ in you? Come on now. You can go hold and push all that stuff out. And then, so they, then I, hey, look, and then, like I said, with your, your power here, they're looking at the beam in your eye, and they're like, what the hell? You can't tell me nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's why. That's why I think we ought to take a look at that. Exactly. I really think we need to examine that because we will realize if we take that, take this word and start turning it to say that that word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And we start turning this thing around like a mirror and, and looking at something that exactly. most of us are us. Exactly. We start condemning other folk, but we realize we have not arrived. I, and that raised nobody from the dead, ain't over no blinded eyes. That's it. I ain't get here to no deaf folk. I, it's a lot of stuff that he said, these signs shall follow, that ain't yeah. follow me yet. Yeah. And until I get there, I don't even feel comfortable with it. You understand exactly. what I'm trying to say? I'm still going. And that and one, we have to get to that point. 
Exactly, because that would be the as if. Bunch of hypocrites. We I we know. hypocrites trying to sing it out of area, and we got areas ourselves. We got, right. people, we got people who have committed adultery, been saved, said it was saved. Live, live, fornicating. Committed Hate adultery. Folk. Yeah. Unforgiving. And it's not being negative, right? It's just being, it's just saying is, why are you so upset at this when you had issues about yourself? You got to, you got to put all that in perspective. That's all. One thing is, be an example. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man, without telling somebody else to be an example, you be one. <laughs> now that's you what you're an example. Hey, hey, look at this. Remember Jesus said, which of y'all can convict me of sin? That's right. And, and that's, that's, that's a good word. And that's the word we have. We got to begin to embrace on our own. Because once, what did he say? If you're a judge, you have not, been, you, you no longer do the law, but you're a judge. Yeah. You have not, you are no longer a doer of the law, but you're a judge. Come on now. Like you ain't doing the law yourself. Right. You're judging other people because when Jesus said, I did not come to the world to judge it, but to save it. And he says in another place, a man who does not keep my, my word, him I do not condemn. Mm -hmm. He condemned already. He didn't say that in the world, but that's the reality. Of it. He got to condemn it. He got already condemned. Exactly. So why are we condemning folks that aren't living up to the standard that we could live up to until Christ came, came alive in us? That's the point I'm trying to say. Give them Christ. Bring them Christ. Let Christ work for people. And he that's what made my job real easy. Hey, guy, I can't do too much teaching out there. Yeah. You know I, mean? I, I can tell you about Jesus and the goodness of the kingdom. I can recruit you. But I ain't got it. I ain't going. I don't, I'm not called at this point to, to bring you into discipleship. That's the job for hopefully the rest of the congregation that we bring you to. Right. But, uh, but, uh, and, 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 and so the Bible study for me has really been, I mean, I'm loving this because it got too complicated. It's like, exactly. that's too much. Yeah. yeah, I can't teach you all this. You bet that nine hours and you don't understand half of what you're talking about. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You're wasting time. I do not run up to home and say, y'all need to stop being home and say, I, I, I can't do that because I don't know the condition that they came into their life. Exactly. Exactly. They might perceive it as being true, bona fide, God given love. Right. To be caring. So if the first thing I do is attack what they think is authentic, then I'm attacking them. Right, and the whole point is your you job is bring them to Christ. Bring them to him. Bring them to Christ. That's the key. I had to get them. Yeah. And I think you should have been there for them six years. Them six years was a trip. Hey, Amen. I debated at the beginning of that thing. I was drunk as a skunk. Drunk I debated as... whether drinking is right or wrong. You should have got a letter. You should have got a letter. I know, right? That's and what they you... did. And that surprised me. <laughs> the it fact that you... I didn't get a letter surprised me. Right. Got a letter. Get out. And then the women came by and, and got me out the house and brought me to the Lord. Brought you back. They Man, brought you back. Sam is still up there preaching about people being drunk. I don't know if Sam preached about people being drunk or son or not, but it seems like it. You know? Hey, look, it hit you when it needed to hit you. That's the point. <laughs> and it got me loose. Come on, it, brother. It showed the power of God, man. I, and I'm, I'm happy about that today. <laughs> So let's do this. I am happy about that today. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat all of you. This is my body, which shall be broken for you. Whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So he took the bread, they break it, and they ate it. Amen. About time for me to go again. Huh? It's, it's 12 26. We start at 1. Are we still up at 1? About 8 10, 8 10, 8 15. At 12 26, we start out on the street at 1. Oh, okay. Gotcha. When supper was in it, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and praise. He blessed it. Gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink, all of you. This is a cup of my blood. Blood will do an everlasting covenant. They shall be shared for you and for all men, so that sins may be forgiven. Whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Amen. And so you took the cup and drank it. Ah. Hallelujah. Supper was ended. Yep. They sang a song. And then went out the cavalry. 
Amen. Amen. Lord, I have went to the garden against him and he prayed to you. Ah. <laughs> hey. Lord,